Hello, it's uh, Adil bringing you a review of the European markets after the uh, uh, European close from uh, on behalf of uh, CFDS Pro uh, working as an analyst on their behalf. Okay, so uh, let's try and sum up uh, the fundamentals first of all. Okay, so we had the uh, concerns over Spain and the Spanish elections. That was one variable, okay, in terms of the bearish argument, okay. We had concerns over Greece, again, the uncertainty, talk about missing an IMF payment, uh, arguments for and against, uh, rumours for and against, whether or not they'll make the payment, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that created uncertainty, of course, the yields spike, uh, okay, even though, having said that, the uh, stock exchange in Athens certainly booked the trend and wasn't concerned at all, it was up by 1%, okay, so certainly is a uh, strange market strange market indeed okay so basically we had the uh, concerns of I mean jitters of the Spanish elections Greece hits banks etc so obviously the banking sector as I have explained with regards to the FTSE came under uh, under under immense pressure we also had a bank um, certain I think shares were suspended or halted I think an Italian bank again linked to Greece okay at the close of trading, losses for Spain, IBEX were minus 0.7%, surpassed 2% on Monday. Obviously, Spain's uh, Spanish IBEX was uh, the index in Spain was down, I think, almost 2% yesterday. While Greece's Athex, uh, uh, our composite share, obviously tumbled 3% sympathy with those regional losses, a FTSE MIB, etc., etc. The French CAC, so on and so forth. Banks in Spain, Greece, and Italy, along with France, bore the brunt of losses. Okay. So again, this uh, uncertainty regarding Greece certainly is, a, is, is obviously a risk-off scenario and is putting pressure on the downside and that's the reason why, as you can see with regards to European indices today, we're certainly all in the red, okay? Uh, except the FTSE MIB really, the Italian market, thing just happened to survive and obviously the, uh, the Athens. Okay, so even though with a, a weaker Euro, now the Euro was weak because of the uncertainty regarding Greece, also with regards to the hawkish I mean that's a, a third variable that's, that was actually bearish for equities uh, given the fact that Miss uh, Yellen is being interpreted as being hawkish uh, you're talking a rate rise stronger dollar obviously should affect emerging markets and obviously uh, puts pressure in terms of uh, the costs to capital uh, again that certainly is another concern but having said that given the fact that Mr Courier, Noya and Mr Draghi talked up QE front loaded uh, last week okay regardless of uh, the actual uh, uh, Miss Yellen being hawkish and her uh, interpretation of the data thus far is just a temporary setback and uh, the market or the US economy should should be back in terms of growth etc going forward uh, and given the fact that all the economic data out well majority of the US economic data according to Mr Ashraf Lady it has been uh, that uh, supporting the dollar uh, move higher uh, and uh, supports that growth going forward will certainly be stronger okay so stronger dollar given the fact that we had uncertainties regarding Greece and obviously Spain uh, and given the fact that Miss Yellen was hawkish all those obviously contribute to the euro USD and the euro in general falling and collapsing which in turn should uh, should actually be bullish for uh, European equities if it weren't for the uncertainty in Greece and Spain okay especially given the fact that Asian markets were, were quite stellar I think the Shanghai was up by two to three percent yesterday today again it was up by another two percent pretty stellar performance and Nikkei obviously pushing higher as well so overall the bias was very b bullish from the Asian markets okay uh, until the oil price started to collapse even with a stronger US economic data obviously a dollar uh, was hurting commodities and cause them to reverse and sell off and, and the FTSE obviously followed as well be the banking sector and the commodity sector obviously feeling the uh, feeling the pressure okay so that's the scenario that we have here uh, bear in mind though we do have the QE put from Mr Draghi the QE front loaded so on and so forth so th that argument certainly holds that central banks have your back and the central banks will buy every dip or come in to support the dip with some type of uh, uh, short squeeze catalyst whether it be via fundamentals technicals etc uh, whether it just be jaw balling the markets so from that perspective let's look at the uh, technicals now folks okay given the summation uh, with regards to uh, European markets okay so the Jax obviously was down so I want to start off with the German DAX given the fact that it's a leader in Europe so let's have a look at the German DAX okay so the DAX has sold off back into gap fill support so that should act as temp uh, temporary support for now 
uh, as we all know, based on technicals, a gap level once filled acts as support. Given the fact that the thrust higher here negated the HNS formation, which I obviously have highlighted for quite some time now. I mean, we had this beautiful HNS formation until the market obviously uh, negated it. Okay, so the QE uh, front loaded speech obviously negated the right shoulder, and uh, when you have a failed move okay then the markets generally reverse in the opposite direction so we've obviously pushed higher we've pushed back on Greece uncertainty and Spain uh, Miss Yellen being hawkish and we've closed the gap so one could 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 deduce given the fact that the HNS has been negated you're looking for a short squeeze further higher given the fact that you've got QE front loaded etc etc you're looking at 12,000 12,400 again okay um, interesting okay so again all hypothetical scenarios uh, everybody must learn to trade and observe the markets for themselves independently I'm just thinking out loud here and looking at all the potential scenarios that could occur and the fundamentals that, that would support it as well okay so German market into potential support uh, into gap fill support okay so 60 minute chart now with regards to the German DAX now this is a chart that I tweeted out during the day with regards to the bear flag formation we had bearish consolidation looking for a sell-off and, uh, and that's exactly what we got right down into gap fill uh, support we've obviously broken this key trend line now so obviously that's uh, say goodbye to that for now okay so let's just uh, get, uh, eradicate that okay so again into gap fill support looking at technicals previous resistance equals support as we all know so we all have previous resistance equals support previous horizontal support so that's basically what we're observing for now if that level holds and obviously we're looking for a bounce if that fails to hold then the next level of support for the German DAX will be in this region here okay you have support around 11,400 obviously if that goes then you're looking at back to down to 11,200 and that's the scenario and situation that we face given the fact that this uh, market has failed to make a higher high or should we say a, a lower high oh sorry lower low do apologize okay so you had this inverted type inverted type head and shoulders formation as you can see here your left shoulder here head and the market obviously pushed higher uh, we did i did expect this market to hold a support level initial bounce we did support we did bounce and we have held we've gone below pivot s3 which is quite unusual but you have to respect the market and respect the price action okay because price action is king okay so at this very juncture uh, there is a diagonal trend line here uh, may well come into uh, a not really okay it's just this one here so obviously we do break low there is a support 11550 but again previous resistance equals support and I am anticipating and expecting that to hold okay 10 minute chart on the German DAX given the fact that we did have a good volume coming into that bottoming tail on the 60 minute chart so certainly make a note of that as well folks okay so again as you can see here last towards the day short squeeze etc and that's exactly a gap fill okay so this is a, an interesting scenario as well uh, the price action today on the German DAX very strange initially we bounced higher given the fact that like I said Asian markets higher very impressive etc and uh, the market certainly thrust uh, a higher uh, until we made a new higher then obviously the market gave it all back uh, very very interesting scenario with regards to the opening price action given the fact that obviously Asian markets were very very bullish okay so once we made this lower high in the market sold off quite substantially so the 10 minute chart at this very juncture we have this uh, bearish channel as you can observe here okay so uh, we are looking with regards to the market and the movement there Let's see if I can draw a channel or get a channel going of any worth mm, not really but we will respect it for now uh, looking for a potential breakout this channel or down with a bearish trend line looking for a thrust higher uh, if the market does thrust higher you're looking at 11680 as being potential resistance where previous support equals resistance so at the pivot s3 and that just shows you the um, the extent of the sell-off today very very impressive okay so again gap fill support folks bear that in mind from a technical perspective i would not like to be very bearish here from my perspective okay and looking for a potential thrust or a move higher okay so that's the German DAX summation so one would presume that German DAX is obviously into support then given the fact that German DAX is the leader then one would presume that the rest of the markets are into support and we'll certainly assess that and uh, uh, we'll certainly uh, come to that conclusion later on once we study all the markets so the next market as we all know is a, the French CAC uh, obviously uh, 
it's very in terms of potency and uh, movements in Europe it's generally the one that's observed uh, given the fact that it's the second biggest economy okay so uh, the H&S formation which I've highlighted for for uh, for over a week now uh, I've uh, raised this issue um, or highlighted this uh, this pattern uh, given the fact that it's respecting the 61 to 75 percent fib okay uh, and uh, that needs to be respected so slight cause for concern with regards to France but having said that like I said central banks have your back uh, if you're a trader if you're a dip buyer uh, the central bank will always step in and, and certainly assist and aid in any way with any bullish arguments to create or trigger a short squeeze that's pretty pretty well known now Mr Murphy's documented that as well with his H&S formations so the uh, daily chart given the fact that French GDP actually actually rose uh, stronger than expected last week as well so pretty impressive um, again uh, one must be uh, one must remain open to all potential scenarios and patterns okay so given the fact that the market's not made any lower lows we're looking for a higher low given the fact that we've had a higher high we are holding this resistance here previous support or equals resistance around this 5130 5140 region that seems to be a trouble for the french cac to get past so obviously bear that in mind uh, for future trading okay so if the market comes back into that level I would certainly remain cautious but you are seeing a weakest link type scenario here for the French CAC so French CAC would certainly be one of the first indices that I would like to be showing uh, from, a, from a trading perspective uh, in the week ahead okay so the French CAC has been resilient though regardless I mean we actually still held the uh, 200 MA and we, we didn't actually close uh, the gap below so again that has to be respected okay so you do have an unfilled gap below so that certainly remains open so watch out for the french cac to remain vulnerable to that 5020 support level below okay uh, going forward in this week ahead i do i mean if i was uh, trading just purely on technicals i would be a, i would be trading towards that gap given the fact that uh, the uncertainty regarding greece and spain certainly is 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 is, is, is the status quo uh, at this juncture okay so Again, remain open, be flexible, okay, and uh, uh, adhere and adjust to the market bias. But that level certainly needs to be respected now. Given the fact that we have created a type of uh, mini H&S here, left shoulder, the head being put in, potential bounce here looking for, and then a, a right shoulder, and that may well trigger the technical pattern for the gap to close below. Uh, and uh, given the fact that we did have a potential bottoming tail, that needs to be respected as well. Uh, but that gap below certainly makes the French CAC vulnerable, folks. Given the fact that you have a H&S formation daily chart as well, certainly needs to be uh, respected. Again, so uh, the 10 minute chart, as you can all see, I mean, it's a technical mess at the moment. So let me just clean this up for you. Okie dokie. So again, we're, we're working towards that gap below. So again, for our traders, remain focused on that potential gap for French CAC. As you all know, the gaps, uh, the, the gaps act like a magnet and attract price action. Okay, so uh, let's just try and draw in my gap levels, open and closes for the for the week. Okay, any uh, major can, uh, support zones? Nothing here at present. Uh, this is the only one level that I had. Uh, I'm not sure why my trend lines haven't been saved, but no harm in doing them again. Okay, so again, it's all a learning curve those that are watching for uh, technical analysis lessons etc this should help you as well okay so that's all I can see for now okay um, from a technical perspective again it remains vulnerable to that gap below 5014 so or, so certainly remain open to that uh, gap uh, and it certainly seems that gap is uh, is certainly the focus okay so uh, as a trader if I were trading this I'll be looking for an entry probably around the 51 25 one thirty region on the French cat looking for a short towards that gap fill below okay so the French cat certainly remains vulnerable certainly remains weak that's all I can say with regards to my conclusion there euro stocks 50 let's just uh, go ahead and observe the euro stocks 50 okay so daily chart as always start with the larger time frames and work your way across okay go to the daily chart again uh, Euro stock certainly remains bullish from compared to the French CAC. Okay, you do have lower lows, lower highs. Obviously, we're respecting that. The gap level, which I've already explained, is here. Okay, at 3590. Again, the market is vulnerable, and if that gap remains open, the longer it remains open, the more likely uh, the market wants to close. For now, okay. So uh, again, given the fact that you have QE speech and Korea and Neuer. And you've had a three bar pullback as well don't be surprised if the market breaks out 
and uh, especially given the fact that the euro is currently trading at the 101.08 level again that's bullish for European equities don't be surprised if you're looking at 3800 in the foreseeable future so again remain open-minded okay and uh, I'll be aware of all the potential possibilities okay with regards to the euro stock so I wouldn't be too bearish on this in terms especially compared to the French CAC uh, and my inclination the daily chart would be potentially bullish but again uh, markets dictate and they will uh, force the bias uh, accordingly okay 60 minute chart the French CAC again uh, so euro stocks 50 again you have this uh, gap level uh, support below although you have put in this uh, bottoming tail which again uh, needs to be respected you have previous uh, resistance equals support okay so that's exactly where we're looking for in terms of support Okie dokie. Uh, again, that bottoming tail is the key from my perspective. Okay, certainly is the key. And given the fact that we put in a higher high, and uh, one would have presumed then that we're looking for a higher low, and we are into the 50 to 61 percent region, uh, that would certainly be a key level or key higher low. Okay, looking for a higher high. 10 minute chart of the euro stocks. I'll uh, just chart that for you as well give you an insight okay seems to be a right mess uh, I mean this is a, the trade that I took in the morning in terms of euro stocks pushing higher closed it up here okay uh, I retook it uh, obviously uh, again around this region obviously closed up here uh, and for now uh, we have this gap that remains unfilled so again that's attracting uh, uh, in terms of uh, the, the is it part of the gaps so that's probably the best way of explaining it so you have a gap at 3590 given the fact that euro is lower now it's dropping to 1.0870 it's very unlikely that gap will close and then you have a gap above at 3680 again battle of the gaps folks okay battle of the gaps that's probably the best way of explaining this for now okay so uh, a diagonal trend line we can draw here taking that pivot high there connecting it to pivot high here okay and uh, we are obviously making lower lows and lower highs so that certainly needs to be respected as well okay but from my perspective, looking for a potential thrust higher, back into this 3660 region, potentially higher. Okay, uh, so Euro stocks, CAC definitely bearish, DAX into support, Euro stocks potentially into support, although there's a battle of the, uh, the gaps. Okay, now let's have a look at the S&P 350, which certainly seems to be pretty weak uh, out of the lot. Let's just have a look. FTSE Europe, okay, this is the one that was into or broke out of its uh, bullish uh, bullish trend line, although it is into support, uh, into 50 MA support, and has horizontal support. If it breaks below, you got 245 area support as well. So certainly a support zone. Uh, again, we will have to see whether or not this market tests this. Uh, obviously, uh, respects this diagonal trend line, whether it recaptures it, especially with the euro so low, okay and you have this unfilled gap below uh, above as well so again that gap above is now potentially acting as a, as a magnet to force the markets higher okay now the uh, your s p 350 let me just bring that up as well if i can find it okay foxy europe uh, here we go s p europe 350 so daily chart of the s p 350 this is an important chart that i observe on a daily basis very very important in terms of support okay so you do have a bearish engulfing candle that certainly needs to be respected having said that like i stated with the euro so low uh, acting as a potential stimulus for european equities one needs to be aware that the fact that that can certainly act as a bullish catalyst uh, and one must not ignore it okay so again diagonal trend line 50 ma support uh, you have previous resistance equals support as well so there's a strong argument here for a potential bounce and a, pot a potential thrust higher whether or not we get back to the 1700 level again is debatable whether or not we hold this lower high uh, is debatable but given the fact that we had we did actually break through 75 percent fib what and given the fact that noya Kure and mr draghi uh, are beating the drums of qe it's very hard for me to uh, take a bearish bias at this juncture, but again, the markets uh, are the ones to uh, dictate and not us. Okay, so uh, as we all know, I think we've learned from QE1, QE2, QE3 in the US not to fight central banks. They dictate if they're printing money, and uh, that money is obviously feeding its way into stocks because there's no yield 
uh, or, for, or being forced out of the bond market, then obviously this is a situation that you're going to uh, what, that's going to occur. Uh, obviously, overinflated stock markets, but who cares? It's a game of musical chairs. Keep playing until the music stops. Okay, uh, so that's a wrap up of the European equities, folks. Uh, uh, and obviously, uh, this will continue. Uh, I am obviously acting as an analyst on behalf of CFDS uh, Pro. Uh, okay, so CFDS.com. Certainly um, uh, visit their website. Okay, I encourage you to visit their website. Certainly sign up, open up an account. Um, uh, very reliable, very user friendly platform. Okay, so uh, and they also have an offer there as well uh, for those that are interested. Okay, folks, so uh, risk on, risk off, wax on, wax off. Goodbye now.